Alright, what's up guys? Um, I have a very special video for you guys today. Um, today we're looking at Arc Lake Shadow, which is a uh, brew that I've been working on. Um, spent the last few days kind of tweaking this list. Um, started with something completely different and have ended up in a, a pretty good spot, I feel. Um, so the idea of this deck is uh, kind of weird, kind of different. Um, basically, we're trying to play with Arc Lake Phoenix in Legacy. Um, I took the inspiration. Uh, I took inspiration from uh, Andrea Mangucci's video um, from Channel Fireball with his Buried Alive Arclight Phoenix deck. Uh, his deck was a little bit different. Um, some uh, the the biggest difference is that I'm actually running a uh, a Death Shadow shell with Arclight Phoenix. Uh, this is something that I feel like actually goes really well together for a number of reasons that that I'll get to. Um, we're also running uh, some counter magic in the form of days, which his version was not running. Um, and uh, we also, what, what other differences are there? We're not playing the preordains as well. We only have have brainstorm and ponder. All right, so some some things to note for this deck: um, we're running four gut shot, which is definitely an interesting choice. But this card, as I've been playing it with it, has been doing really really well. Uh, it synergizes two different ways in this deck. Firstly, um, it's basically a free spell to get back Arc uh, Arclight Phoenixes, which means that a Buried Alive and a Dark Ritual and a Gut Shot for free is uh, three Arclight Phoenixes, but it also synergizes with our Death Shadows as well. Um, it's basically... It acts kind of like a Street Wraith. You don't get to draw off of it, but you get the two damage to buff your Death Shadows. Um, and then being able to ping something I found is really useful uh, in Legacy. It kills Snapcaster Mage, Baleful Strix, uh, Thalia, Guardian of Thraben, um, just a lot of stuff. Uh, everything in Infect, <laughs> basically. Um, and on top of that, people are really not playing around it because it can uh, it can buff your Death Shadow for, for two, but sometimes it can actually do it for three as well if you actually ping yourself with it. Um, and uh, yeah, this, this card has been really, really overperforming. Um, other than that, we're also running three Cabal Therapy. Um, this card does really well with both all of our Thought Seizes, um, tokens off of Young Pyromancer, and also with Arcolite Phoenix as well, um, because you can cast Cabal Therapy. And if you have an Arcolite Phoenix out, if you cast one other spell, you can actually do the, the flashback with Cabal Therapy to sacrifice Arcolite Phoenix and it'll come back if you cast three spells. So this basically counts as two spells sometimes, and you get like a free look at your opponent's hand before you before you rip it apart. Um, other than that, we're also running a Hymn to Turok. Um, this is something that I switched out for the third Cabal Therapy, mainly for um, mainly for like grindier matchups. Being able to rip out two cards is, is really nice, and it plays so well with Dark Ritual too. Um, I mean, turn one, Hymn to Turok and Thoughtseize is just really, really good. Um, our mana base is kind of similar to the uh, the blue black shadow deck. Um, we have one underground sea, twelve fetches, um, and uh, the difference though is uh, we're running red, so we have uh, one blood crypt and then one badlands as well. Uh, other things sideboard um, looks fairly similar to the blue black version. We have like two Liliana Lasso, Hope, Toxic Deluge, Bitter Blossom, Ratchet Bomb, Edicts. Uh, Marsh Casualties, another him, two Surgicals, then two Pyroblasts. The two Pyroblasts are kind of nice since we have red, something that the blue-black shadow version does not have. Um, has been doing pretty well. Another thing to note, though, is that um, our sideboard plays really well with Dark Ritual. In uh, in matches where you want to slam Liliana with the Last Hope, like against a control matchup, being able to play it on turn one is really, really good. Um, things like Toxic Deluge also play really well if you need to get off a uh, an early board sweep like against elves or something and they also kind of help build on each other too because you might be able to do i've had a few games where i've gone like dark ritual dark ritual uh like toxic deluge and and buried alive um which is uh really good because then everything comes back bitter blossom works really well with cabal therapy because you basically will always have something to to sacrifice as well uh other things uh we have ratchet bomb for um, surgical, I mean, uh, for Chalice of the Void and uh, stuff like that. But Chalice of the Void actually does not really totally kill this deck, which is really interesting. The reason being 
that even though we have so many one mana spells, we will obviously, we don't want them to drop a Chalice of the Void, but if they do do it, if we have a Buried Alive, um, we can go ahead and cast a few of these things. Um, and even though they don't resolve, so long as the Buried Alive gets hit, our Phoenixes can actually still come back. Um, so yeah, that's basically a rundown of the deck. So let's go ahead and jump into some matches. I can show you what this deck is capable of. All right, guys, we are here on uh, game number one. We are on the play, and we have a ridiculous hand. So we're going to go ahead and keep this. This is a turn one triple Phoenix with Thoughtseize up as well. All right, so so long as they don't force of will this, we should be in good shape. Yep, I don't think I don't think they're going to be able to do anything. So let's go ahead and just take let's take glimpse of nature, but I don't think it's going to matter. So we'll go ahead and play another dark ritual and then buried alive. Get three phoenixes. Oops, three phoenixes. Gonna pass three triggers. And this is likely game. So we don't kill them next turn because they have the forest, so they don't have to use their fetch lands. Uh, I guess they would be at one even, even if they use a fetch land anyway. They're gonna green sun for their dryad arbor, but they really don't have anything to go with. So let's go ahead and brainstorm. Pitch back Phoenix and a land. And we'll hold up Brainstorm and swing for nine again. All right, pretty easy game one. So we're up against elves. So we're going to want to bring in some of our more sweepy strategies. I'm going to go bring in Marsh Casualties, Liliana, Liliana, and Toxic Deluge. We can go ahead and take out a Phoenix on the draw. Um, what else can we take out? What else can we take out? The gut shots are really good. I think the discard is pretty good too. I kind of don't want to take out a Buried Alive because I want to be able to combo off. We can take out a Phoenix because we only need three. Um, it makes it a little riskier because if we draw one, we're in trouble. But, I mean, we're not in trouble. It just makes the that combo a little bit worse. I kind of like the one him, but not bringing in the second one. Um, we want our cantrips. So what can we cut? I guess Death's Shadow is kind of mediocre because, hmm, yeah, let's go down to two, two of them and what can we cut? I guess go down a couple of therapy because we're on the, the draw too. Go ahead and run it like that. So now that we only have two Death Shadows, we're a little bit less inclined to do stuff. Now this is great. Now this is like exactly what you want to see. So Dark Ritual plays so well with our sideboard cards. If we draw a free spell, we can go ahead and go for Phoenix. But even if we don't, we can turn one Liliana the Last Hope, which against Elves is basically a death sentence. 
Sure. Oh, man. And we got the free spell, too. So this was just a very good game. GG. But I don't think... I don't think you're going to like what I'm about to do to you. Turn one Lily on the Less Hope was the second best thing we could have done this game. Yep, and that's it. So that was a very quick match number one. All right, so we're here in match number two. Um, we do not have a keepable hand. We do not have a keepable hand, mainly because we have two Phoenixes and not too much else going on, so we're going to go ahead and mulligan. Mm, a no-lander. A no lander. So if we get one land, we're in really good shape. All right, so if we get one land, we're in really good shape. And going to five is pretty bad. My opponent said yuck. So I'm going to go ahead and keep in the hopes that he's got almost nothing. Opponent moles to five, and that is the easiest bottom you'll ever see. So keeping a no lander, are we going to get punished? Okay. All right. Well, the good news is that even if we had a land, this would kill us. Even if we had a land, this would kill us. This is the absolute worst thing against us, is tax effects like this. This and Thalia are like the worst things. Thalia we can at least deal with. We have no way of dealing with this. Chalice of the Void, we can actually do stuff through. So it seems really dumb that I kept this hand, but actually knowing what my opponent's playing and knowing what his hand was now, I actually think that it's better to just pass. Just pass and then and then concede. You can see before we discard anything. He's going to assume that we're like on Storm or something. Sure. Wait, he tapped? Oh, right. He tapped one because of Thorn. Okay. All right. So let's just go ahead and concede here. So our opponent has no idea what we're on, but we do know what he's on. So let's go ahead and... Let's go ahead and bring in... Bitter Blossom, whatever again, not Marsh Casualties. Bitter Blossom and Liliana. Um, and then the Ratchet Bombs, too. Let's cut two days because they're going to have tons of mana. Let's cut an Arclight Phoenix. Another thing I'm afraid of is Ensnaring Bridge as well. So I kind of want to keep in. A decent amount of discard. But they're definitely going to be playing in Snaring Bridge as well. So let's just go ahead and run it like this. Okay. So we have some disruption here. And we have a Ratchet Bomb. And a Death Shadow that won't really be doing too much. But I'll go ahead and keep this. So let's go ahead and... Turn one... Turn one Amethyst. I mean, Cabal Therapy naming Thorn. All right, no, none of that. Also, no lands. So, that's something. We can Ratchet Bomb for zero and do a lot of damage, though. Wasteland. Okay. Sure. Sure. Yep. Huh. Hmm. 
Okay. Opponent asking if I'm on shadow. And I said, you will see. All right, so we can take five this turn by thought seizing, fetching, and shocking. Um, which isn't really good enough. So I can either thought seize away lodestone. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to brainstorm first. I kind of want to hit a Cabal Therapy, because I know what I want to name. So he has Ballista and Lodestone Golem in hand. So he has Ballista and Lodestone Golem. Um, I kind of want him to end up playing the Ballista. Okay, so then we can rip a Thought Seize. So... Let's go ahead and put back Phoenix and Thought Seize. And let's go ahead and play Thought Seize. And we're going to do it on. Maybe we do it on Ballista. Because we can daze the Lodestone Golem. They only have three, and maybe they'll play another one. So yeah, let's just do that. Let's make it so they don't play anything next turn. So all they have is Lodestone. Yep. Perfect. Yeah, that's my type of disruption. Hand disruption encounters. So he's going to attack for two, but he shouldn't. He shouldn't, but he does. All right. So let's... Let's play the Blood Crypt, because I don't want him to wasteland both my blue sources. And Shadow. Now he knows we're on red, though, because he was que he was questioning what we were running. Everything else we've done so far has been blue and black. Chalice. That's, like, perfect. That's so ratchet bombable. Yes. Do it. Destroy yourself. Shouldn't have did that. No attacks. Okay. Gonna go ahead and play Ratchet Bomb. And then swing and I'm not even gonna blow it up. I have nothing that I need to blow it up with. This is basically preventing him from playing any zero drops right now. I can take him off of his colored mana. Yep, GG. All right, so we're able to lock him out in game two. Able to lock him out in game two. I kind of like the days. I kind of like the second days. Um, Ratchet Bomb is definitely very good. And we're going to be on the play here. So... Let's cut... A thought sees, I guess. And run it like that. He has the Vault Scourges and stuff, so I still like the Gut Shots. I think the, Lili the Liliana of the Last Hope is, is definitely still good, so... Just run it like that. So, middle of an interesting match. Conceded. Conceded game one because there was absolutely nothing I could do. Hopefully he doesn't get us again like that. Um, if he does, that would definitely stink. But if we can do something crazy on turn one again, then that would be just fine. All right. 
final game. And what do we have? We have a little bit of disruption. We have a Liliana of the Last Hope. We have lots of cantrips. I think this is keepable. Hopefully they don't screw us on the very first on the very first draw. But now that he conceded to that now that he saw that we conceded to that, he probably is gonna keep something that's similar. So let's see. City of Traders, Thorn of Amethyst. That's what I'm guessing. Wasteland, okay. That's okay with me. Sure. All right, so let's just go ahead and blue to Delta pass. Factory, okay. GTA. Well, I think that is worth dazing. So let's grab Watery Grave. Brainstorm. Hmm. Let's throw back a lot of the non... non-spells. And then let's just go ahead and daze that. Okay. And let's pass. And then... And then let's... Fetch Shock now and ponder. Bitter Blossom, Days, and Death Shadow. So we probably are not going to be playing Bitter Blossom next turn because they're probably going to wasteland us. So let's go ahead and put that, and then Death Shadow, and then Days. And we will not shuffle. They're either going to wasteland us or we're going to Days. City of Traders. Value of one. Um, sure. Anything else? If you're going to wasteland me, you should have done it now. Sure. So we can still play Bitter Blossom. Not this turn, but next turn. And he only has one card in hand, so we're not in the worst of shape. So let's go ahead and play a tapped Watery Grave because we don't care about Death Shadow and we don't want to fetch because we want that Bitter Blossom. Yeah, that's annoying, but sure. We're not totally dead because we're not under a ton of pressure. We can, we'll start taking three a turn. Yep, we're probably going to get locked, though. Pretty soon. So now we draw Bitter Blossom, and we can play... Polluted Delta... Sure. Take another one. So the annoying thing here... Oh wait, we can play Bitter Blossom here. Okay, so what's better? Is it better to play Bitter Blossom now? Or Liliana, the last hope, next turn. Probably Bitter Blossom now. Yeah. 
We can grab Badlands. I'm an idiot. I can't, I can't cast Dark Ritual. It's going to get countered. Right. Okay, so we'll just pass. That was a misplay because we should have kept those shuffles up in case he draws Wasteland. All right, just powers up Misha's factory and swings for a bunch. And we're pretty much locked out at this point. He can do five. Yeah. Yeah, we're dead. Come on, kill us. All right, we're dead. That was barely a match, but good game. All right, here we are in the next match, and we're fortunate enough to be on the play. On the play, and it's interesting because if we draw basically anything, we're in good shape. But we have no way to assure that we draw anything. So I'm going to mulligan that. It's not proactive enough, I don't think. And then I'll go ahead and keep this. Pyromancer, I think, is good enough to keep for. Buried alive. Not really anything we can do with that, so bottom it is. All right. And off we go. With Thoughtseize. Classic turn one Thoughtseize. So what do we have here? Force, Brainstorm... Edict. I think I want to get rid of the force. It's either force or brainstorm that I want to get rid of here. Okay, if I get rid of brainstorm, t next turn I can play Pyromancer. If they force it in response, I can daze it. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually get rid of, get rid of brainstorm. It's mainly swayed by my decision that I have the the two dazes in hand. If I can resolve a pyromancer, that would be great. So let's go ahead and fetch shock for red and play pyromancer. And it resolves. Awesome. So now we can daze Baleful Strix. I assume that's what's going to be coming down. Ponder. Sure. Sure. Go ahead and ponder. The longer I can keep this up, the more problematic it's going to be for them. He also doesn't know that I have a bunch of gut shots, too. Which is, like, the best thing against Baleful Strix. All right, let's go ahead and brainstorm. And throw back. Arc light. And. Arc light and what else? Probably days. And then let's go ahead and thought seize them. So we're playing against Grixis control. What do we want to get rid of here? So next turn they can play Coal against Command. They can play Baleful Strix. They have Diabolic Edict. So this does pretty much nothing. Colgan's command is kind of annoying, but we do have days, and they have no land. So let's let's just be. What do we want to be? Let's just get rid of their card draw. Let's just take Baleful Strix. Oop, and then attack for two. Another cantrip, sure. 
Mainly looking for land right now. Yep. What else you got? Nothing. All right. Let's end of turn. Brainstorm. Triple days. Okay. Well, let's throw that back there. And let's see if this uh, pyromancer can go the distance. So now what are they going to drop? Coligan's command. No. Tap both islands. Okay, are you going to pay? Okay. Force of will, and they're going to be unhappy. Targeting this. Triple days, my friend. And we still win. Awesome. All right, so against Grixis control. Liliana is good. Him is good. Bitter Blossom's good. And I think these two guys are good too. The gut shots. All right, I think we want to get rid of one Phoenix. Um Maybe a Ponder. There isn't too much I really want to cut. Um, they're going to have a hard time dealing with the Phoenixes. But maybe we just cut a Buried Alive as well. Maybe only one him to Turok. Cut a Ponder. On the play, get rid of... Those two? And, sure, cut a daze. Whatever. I don't know. That seems fun. Okay. What do we have here? We have a Cabal Therapy and two dazes and two Dark Rituals and not much else. Gonna go ahead and mulligan this. And, sure, we can keep this. Death Shadow on top, I think, is pretty good. Gonna get ripped with Thoughtseize. Looks like... Looks like... Sort of. Now, the interesting thing is that, are they gonna take Buried Alive? They're gonna spend a few seconds reading it. They're gonna see what it does. And then they're probably gonna do it. Take Brainstorm, okay. Means our combo is still online, but they do have Force of Will. So let's go ahead and Fetch Shock and cast Ponder. Ooh. So we can go for the combo next turn. If that's the case, we don't need the second Buried Alive. So let's... Leave that there, that on top. Don't shuffle and draw the land in case we get disrupted. And pass turn. Baleful Strix would be pretty annoying. No Baleful Strix, okay.
So I can actually daze my own death shadow now too. So let's go ahead and cast Dark Ritual. Cast Buried Alive. One, two, three. Cast Death Shadow off Badlands because it's going to be getting dazed anyway. And we're going to daze it. I have no idea what the opponent can be doing in response. No. All right, so we get our phoenixes. Maybe they have like a lightning bolt or something. They take nine. All right, opponent, what do you have? Coligan's command. Brainstorm? Okay, that's not Coligan's command. Lightning bolt can kill one. Doesn't have the mana for Baleful Strix. And we win. There we go. That's game. That is a match.